I'm DJ Alex Brown and welcome to today's video. Before I get started with today's review video of the QSC K118s that I have behind me here, um, I wanted to quickly mention two things. First of all, I apologize that I'm kneeling on the floor and I'll be doing this a lot in this video because I'm going to be talking about the subwoofers. We'll talk about the weight of these in a minute, but I'm not going to put them on top of a table or something to look at them. Um, also, I apologize that I am wearing an It's Lit sweatshirt and not something that says DJ Alex Brown on it. As you may know, I own It's Lit. It's the sweatshirt I put on this morning. If you've made it through this intro, stick around. We have a lot to talk about today. So before we get too deep into this video, a little bit of background on this subwoofer and why I am just doing a review of this now. I have a couple of reasons for that. You guys, if you are just looking for a straight up review, you want the quick, dry, and dirty version, skip to the end of this video. I'll save you the stories. Uh, you can find the wrap up. If you want the full in-depth comparison, you gotta watch the whole thing. Uh, first of all, you might be wondering why I'm reviewing this now. The, the first answer is because I just got a set of these. I have been in the market for a new set of subs for about two years, and um, it took me going to the DJ Expo and hearing these to decide which subs that I wanted. Um, I'll give a little bit more on that story as we go through, but I also wanted to mention that the earliest mention of these subs that I could find was around late 2019 for a release date. Now, of course, we all know what happened in 2020. We don't need to talk about that, but um, I'm sure there's plenty of other content out there on these subs at this point. Um, I will be mentioning these Pro-X uh, sub poles, threaded sub poles that I got to talk about some quick specs on this sub before we get into looking at the actual construction and the display on the back. Again, if you just want to skip to that, I'll leave you a timestamp here for that. But the QSC KS-118s are... 18 inch subwoofers. They have built in processing that we'll talk about in a minute, um, but they are an 18 inch subwoofer. They are a 3600 watt class D amplifier. That is a peak number. So if you do go through the tech specs, that is the peak. So I was not able to find an actual program rating, but we can assume it's probably somewhere around 1800 watts. For the most part, I like to compare speakers and subwoofers based on how they sound compared to other gear that I have. So later in this video, I'll be talking about that, comparing them with the subs I was using before. Now, some of the really cool features that these have for me and for my use, um, and just compared to what I was using before, is they do have that digital signal processing on them. Um, so they can do cardioid mode, um, individual delay. Um, they have a deep DEEP, um, low frequency extension mode, we'll call it, uh, which just makes the bass a little deeper and a little bit louder. They have an adjustable crossover, which I will talk about. There's a little nuance to that um, that I'll mention in a moment. The ability to save scenes. They do have a threaded M20 receiver, as I quickly mentioned about my threaded sub poles that I had to get for these. Um, we will talk about that in just a minute. They do have casters on them, obviously. Again, we will talk about this, but they do come with casters. That is a defining feature for some subwoofers. These do include the casters. They come shipped to you with casters on them, and then uh, there are two things that I will mention as we go through. Obviously, you can see I have the covers on them, but there's also a, a locking cover for the display that we'll mention in a minute. Also advertised is a six-year warranty with product registration. So um, that also happens to be the same as on the uh, QSC K12.2s. Um, so something to consider six years is a very good warranty um i think that's one of the best warranties in the industry that i've seen and at least in my area there are qsc authorized repair facilities so there's a, a production company in my area that is a qsc authorized repair facility so you can actually have warranty work done there um without having to basically ship it back to qsc which is huge because usually with warranty stuff you have to ship it back to the manufacturer and that's usually on the customer to pay that shipping cost. So um, repair facility in your area, then that might be a huge difference in purchasing this over another set of speakers or subwoofers. The moment you've all been waiting for, let's get right into talking about the display on the back of this and the actual construction of this subwoofer. So let's have a look at the back of this here. So first of all, this cover, super, super nice. Um, 
tons of padding in here. There's like an inch of crushable padding. And then there are, um, up in the top, there's like a, a hard plastic protector, which is nice. Over here, a little hard to see, but there's the pouch. Um, because I don't feel like pulling this whole thing out. I'm just gonna show you. It's the same pouch like this as on any QSC bag. This is a K-12 right here. So that's that. And uh, these do come with the same length of power cable as the K-12, which is plenty enough for a sub. Now you'll see they do take IEC for power um, and it is a blue locking IEC. You have your power switch here, fan, Gain. Of course, I'm always keeping this at 12 o'clock. Your inputs, outputs here, screen, selection buttons, and dial. Now I want to take a sec with the inputs here. You can see these are actually combo inputs, which is very interesting. So um, I think most people using this are going to be using XLR, but if you need quarter inch cable, um, you definitely could. As we back out a little bit here, you can see these uh, couple of screw pieces you can purchase a uh, locking cover for this here. Okay, so it's called the uh, KS lock. It's a lockout cover so that you can't adjust these things here. So if you're using this in a, a install situation, you might wanna do that. I just wanna mention the casters again. These do come with installed casters. There are other manufacturers that don't come with casters that you need to purchase separately. I will talk about that more in the comparison. And then you have these protector pieces down the side. I noticed these when I got it, but I was actually just thinking about how. So this is protecting, you know, your display and everything here, but it's also protecting kind of the rub zone if you go over a curb or something, which I actually think is very cool. I didn't, I didn't think about that until I used it this weekend. So now let's get this plugged in. It does actually boot before the audio will start coming out. So this display will be on, but it takes maybe another second for the audio to come out. So just so you guys know that. And then you have your crossover here. This is just settings for different speakers, if you can see that. Uh, the only thing that I find interesting here is that there's no no crossover option, which I really wish there was just a no crossover option. Not that it's that big a deal. Delay, of course, deep. I've used the deep mode. Honestly, these things are so powerful. I don't really see a need to use it in my day-to-day -day use, but you might. Cardioid, if you select something in cardioid here, so there's a couple options based on how you have it set up. The manual will tell you exactly what to do with that. But if you turn cardioid on, it will adjust these things and it will have them locked. And then if you go into settings, you can change the scene, adjust your LED, so you can do front and rear, rear only or front only. So there's no option of no power LED, which I guess is kind of smart. And you can see a little version of this. So if you've made it this far in the video, I'm going to take my iPad and do a little bit of comparison here. I have the spec sheet for this sub in front of me so I can give you all of the tech specs that are really important, but I'm also gonna give you my personal opinion, which I think is pretty important. I'm gonna tell you why I decided to buy these over anything else because part of the reason I decided to buy these was my experience hearing them at the DJ Expo. So if you take a look at the tech specs, I will put a of this on the screen, but there are um, at the frequency response at negative 6 dB is 41 Hertz to 98 Hertz. Um, anything I believe below like 80 to 100 Hertz is generally regarded as sub bass. Um, and I think the audibility level is actually higher than that. With the coverage angle, if you're looking at the spec sheet on this, um, any sub is gonna be omnidirectional unless you set it up in a cardioid pattern. Um, of course, cardioid requires two subs. And uh, in the manual, interestingly enough, you uh, it actually comes with a little guide on how to set up cardioid and there's a couple different methods and which one is best. So. Actually, the first gig I used these on, I was a school dance. I had extra time after I finished setting up and I just set them up in cardioid mo mode to give it a try. Um, I actually wasn't much of a fan of how it sounded, probably because I'm a DJ and I like a lot of rear bass so I can still feel the music as I'm mixing. I have to tell you, I have never heard subs in cardioid configuration before and I was absolutely shocked at how little bass, I actually thought that the subs weren't working when I turned them on and tested them because I hadn't, 
I hadn't played them in just regular mode yet. I had set them up in cardioid and said, oh, I'll give it a try. And I heard it and I was like, where's the bass? And then I walked in front and that's where all the bass was. So um, it was a very interesting experience to try it out. If you ever have the opportunity to at least just set it up, set it up and try it out, it's super cool. Uh, you guys probably know I'm a total gearhead, so that was a cool experience for me. Now, as we get into the actual enclosure of the sub itself, I'm gonna mention that they do come in black and they have a black uh, birch plywood exterior and a black powder coated grill. They do not come in white, which is something that I would really love to see QSC come out with because that's what everybody wants for weddings. I've seen another DJ in my area who has a all white system from another manufacturer um, that looks super clean. Um, it sounds good. I personally don't use that manufacturer anymore because I've blown their speakers um, and I'm not going to name names, but um, unfortunately it, there seems to be this trade-off between like look and quality. I think a lot of wedding DJs would really die for white K12-2s, uh, white uh, KS-118s. Now I can sit here and tell you the speaker dimensions uh, or, or the subwoofer cabinet dimensions, but I'm just going to tell you from my experience, these are smaller than the subs that I had before. So before I was using Mackie SWA 1801s, not to be confused with anything by Rockville. What I can tell you as far as comparison is these are smaller. Those Mackie subs I had in the same spot over uh, the winter last year, which is what I do. And they don't have covers, they don't have bags, anything. These with their covers, so these have about maybe three inches in between them. These fit very comfortably in this area. There is a couple inches on each side. So these are smaller in width. They might be a hair longer. All the control on the back just blows the Mackies out of the water. And those are old subs, so that's not surprising. But, you know, the cardioid mode, that's something that doesn't have. The weight on these is amazing for how much sound these put out. On my Mackie subs were about 140 pounds each. 104 pounds each, including casters. So um, these are, in my eyes, very light for the size sub and the amount of output that they put out. I had another set of subs before I got my set of Mackies from another manufacturer that would probably like 80 or 90 pounds a piece, and they don't come any, those didn't come anywhere close near what these do. Um, very loud very deep and very, I would just say high-end subwoofers. They're very well made. I'm very impressed with them and I'm very happy with my purchase of these. Thank you for sticking with me to this point in the video. I wanted to let you guys know um, a little bit about my experience and why I decided to buy these specific subwoofers over anything else. So here's what I looked at, first of all, at the DJ Expo. I was looking at the Yorkville ES18P I was looking at the QSC KS-118s that I bought. Uh, I looked at the RCF stuff, but the RCF guys didn't really seem to want to show stuff to me. I don't know if they just thought I was a kid or what. Bass Boss BB-15, I think they call it the baby, the baby 15. Bass Boss has two 18-inch subs, which range from large to very large and heavy. Um, and I was a little bit sticker shocked at the cost of the 15 inch, which sound output and everything wise was comparable to the KS-118s. So I don't even wanna know what the, the 18 inch ones cost. I don't even think they included casters. I think you had to pay extra for the casters from what I remember. You know, basically the Bass Boss stuff, it's really nice. I went and heard the Yorkville ES-18P and there was only one in the room. So maybe it was deceiving, but I felt like that thing didn't have any better output than the Mackie subwoofers that I have. So I listened to the QSCs and honestly, I was impressed with the output of that. And I said, this is the set I want. Um, so I did get a little discount from QSC. I was able to order them from QSC directly. And I'm now um, a QSC sponsored artist or I don't know exactly what they call it, but so I, you know, I have to tag them in all my Instagram posts and stuff. But I didn't have any obligation to make this video. Uh, I'm purely making this video because I wanted to let you guys know that these subs are great. So there's there's two things I just want to mention about, and these are kind of part of a reason as to why I decided to go with QSC uh, KS-118s too. Everything from QSC looks the same. Everything works the same. 
And when you begin to grow a company beyond yourself, having things almost like an assembly line being the same becomes very important. So going forward, I'm planning just on buying just QSC speakers. I think you'll also see a lot of other multi-op DJ companies are using QSC speakers probably for that same reason. It's almost like Apple where if you stay in the ecosystem, everything works really nicely together. I've also seen a lot of the production companies in my area that are some of the best companies in the area before going into, you know, rider friendly, like Martin Audio stuff. Uh, they use QSC for everything. Here's the lowdown portion of this video. Good price point along with good quality, which means good value. Uh, $2,000, give or take, for an 18 inch sub that's a little over 100 pounds and puts out plenty of bass, I think is a very fair price point. Uh, the fact that it has covers available for it and comes with the casters installed and everything, I also think is great. They're stackable, which I didn't mention earlier in the video because I didn't think it was really that important, but they're stackable. You know, you can use multiple of these in different combinations to really build a big system. As far as a star rating, I would give these five out of five. Um, I have been almost giddy about my purchase of these subs because they're just exactly what I wanted. I do have a set of K12s that I'll be doing a review of hopefully very soon. I just got a Shed's uh, moving headlight in that I'll hopefully be doing a review of very soon. And there's a couple of products and videos and reviews and things that I want to make. Um, so if there's anything you guys want to see, definitely let me know in the comments. Let me know if you like the video. I'm also getting very close to monetization. So if you can watch more videos, hit that subscribe button. Um, consider purchasing a subscription tier to the channel because I can do that now and uh, ringing that notification bell so you can be up to date when I post a new video or a new review, especially that QSC K12 one. You're going to want to see that one. I'm actually going to do more comparison to the rest of the K series. <clears throat> Once again, everybody, thank you so much for watching. That's going to wrap this one up. Until the next video, peace.